Hi, diamonds are indeed a girl's best friend. But fear not, we haven't ventured into any minefields. This week, India's most illustrious filmmaker has unveiled his diamond bazaar and Ryan Gosling is back in the cinemas. I'm Adhika Faruqi and you're tuned in to Now Showing, where we bring to you the latest gems from Bollywood and Hollywood. Let's dive into the headlines. Love, Lust and Legacy, Hira Mandi unveils a world of intrigue. An ode to Hollywood's unsung heroes, the Fall Guy celebrates stunt performers in style. Lara Dutta, Jimmy Shergill, Ashish Vidyarthi and company talk about their new show, Ranniti. On our special segment, In the Mind of an Actor, Sonali Bendre talks about her acting techniques. And Kho Gai Hum Kaha actor Adarsh Gaurav talks about his new single titled Bechaini. Let's begin with Hira Mandi. Sanjali Lavansali's latest creation, Hira Mandi, The Diamond Bazaar, has taken the streaming world by storm, offering a mesmerizing glimpse into the lives of courtesans in pre independence India. This eight episodic series, set in the oldest red light district of Lahore's Hira Mandi, weaves a tale of love power and freedom against the backdrop of India's struggle for independence. Set in the 1940s, Hira Mandi revolves around Malika Jan, that is Manisha Koirala, the madam of the regal brothel Shahi Mahal, located at the heart of Hira Mandi. The era sees Nawabs funding such brothels, each having a notch girl reserved for their daily entertainment, while their wives lead lonely lives in palaces. Malika Jahan holds sway in Hira Mandi and Shahi Mehel, but her two daughters, Bibbo Jahan, played by Diti Rao Hedri, and Alam Zeb, that is Sharmin Sehgal, have no interest in continuing her legacy. Bibbo Jahan secretly supports the independent struggle by supplying crucial information about the British, while Alam Zeb, a poetess, desires to marry her love and leave Shahi Mehel. Malika Jahan is also a maternal figure to Lajo, that is Richa Chadda. A tragic character, perpetually intoxicated and grieving due to unrequited love. Her younger sister, that is Vahidan, played by Sanjida Sheikh, harbors deep hatred towards Malika Jan, blaming her for her own life's ruin and what she perceives as the loss of her rightful position. Amidst these dynamics, Malika Jan faces her biggest threat from Faridan, that is Sonakshi Sinha, who seeks to seize control of Shahi Mahal and the power it holds. As power struggles ensue in Hira Mandi, there is also a growing unrest in the country against British rule and oppression. Initially at odds with each other over control of Hira Mandi, the women eventually realize that their very existence is at stake as the British plan to eradicate Hira Mandi completely. As the series unfolds, we witness a web of complex relationships, betrayals and alliances all set against the backdrop of a rapidly changing society. Hira Mandi is not just a story about women in a brothel. It is a tale of resilience, ambition and the quest for identity and freedom in a world that seeks to confine and define them. The poetic essence of Hira Mandi is evident throughout, with director Sanjalila Bhansali's admiration for Sufism and Urdu literature shining throughout. References to poets like Amir Khusro, Mirza Ghalib, Mir, Zafar and Niazi add a layer of depth to the narrative, while characters like Alam Zeb, an aspiring poetess, brings poetry into everyday conversations. The series is a visual treat filmed on a grand scale with stunning cinematography by Sudeep Chatterjee, Mahesh Limai, Huinstein Mohapatra and Raghul Dharuman Bhansali pays homage to classics like Mughal -e Azam and Pakiza with the cinematography and set design reminiscent of these iconic films. The world of Hira Mandi is portrayed with such detail and finesse that it transports viewers back to an era where women held sway over both Nawabs and the British. The series beautifully captures the essence of time when these courtesans played a pivotal role in shaping the course of history, a fact that is often overlooked. Hira Mandi is a mesmerizing world of love, power, intrigue, highlighting the strength and resilience of women who were instrumental in securing both their own independence and that of the country.
Hiramandi excels in its costume and production design, enhancing the visual narrative significantly. Rimpal Narula and Harpreet Narula's costumes are not just outfits, but reflections of character and era authentically transporting viewers to the 1920s. Each costume is a masterpiece, meticulously designed to mirror the personalities and statues of the characters, whether opulent or modest. Similarly, Amit Ray and Sobrata Chakrabarti's production design is praiseworthy for its immersive depiction of Hiramandi. The sets are intricately constructed, capturing the era's essence and grandeur. The production design seamlessly merges with the narrative, creating an authentic and captivating world. In Hiramandi, Manisha Kwerala delivers a performance that defines her career, seamlessly transitioning between the fiery persona of Malika Jan and the vulnerable depths of a mother. Her portrayal is captivating, her beauty at times menacing and monstrous, yet always compelling. Sonakshi Sinha shines as her bitter rival, showcasing a strength and grace that mirrors Koirala's performance. Sanjida Sheikh's portrayal is moving, displaying an emotional range that is truly impressive. Sharvan Segal adds a refreshing innocence to the narrative, providing a poignant contrast to the harsh realities of the other characters. Taha Shah Badusha impresses as a passionate young lover and revolutionary, adding depth to the ensemble cast. But for me, Richa Chadda stands out as she leaves a lasting impression with her impactful and very vulnerable performance as a woman who completely lost in love. While Aditi Rao Hedri too embodies ethereal beauty while delivering a powerful portrayal. The supporting cast is equally impressive with Fadeen Khan making a strong impact as Nawab Wali Muhammad and Shekhar Suman and Adhyayan Suman portraying the menacing Nawabs with aplomb. While Farida Jalal brings warmth to her role as Begum Kutsia, the grandmother who is very liberal, very modern and says some really, really interesting dialogues as the grandmother of the lead here who is a revolutionary in the series. In conclusion, Hira Mandi not only entertains but also enlightens, shedding light on a chapter of history often overlooked. It is a series that celebrates the strength, resilience and indomitable spirit of women, making it a must watch for anyone who appreciates good storytelling. So immerse yourself in this enchanting world of Hira Mandi and witness a saga of love, power and freedom unfold like never before. But I do warn you, in the world and the time of Instagram and quick social media consumption, this is this one piece of art that needs patience. If you have it, then this is perfect for you. David Leach started as a stunt double, working with actors like Brad Pitt, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Matt Damon and many more. His directorial debut was a little film called John Wick and he parlayed that success into films like Atomic Blonde and Bullet Train. He returns to the, his roots in The Fall Guy, inspired by the Lee Majors show of the same name about a Hollywood stuntman who happened to also be a bounty hunter. In this film, Ryan Gosling portrays Colt Seavers, a seasoned stunt performer known for his fearlessness in the face of physical challenges. Colt works as a stunt double for the arrogant actor Tom Ryder, played by Aaron Taylor Johnson, who falsely claims to perform all his stunts himself. Despite Cole's professional success, his personal life is complicated. He's romantically involved with Jodie Moreno, a talented camera operator played by Emily Blunt. However, Cole's life takes a tragic turn when a stunt goes awry, resulting in a career-ending injury. Blaming himself for the accident due to his feelings for Jodie, Colt retreats from the public eye and severs ties with Jodie, leaving her heartbroken. The plot thickens when Gail, a tough producer portrayed by Hannah Waddingham, persuades Cole to return to work on Jodie's directorial debut. 
Ryder, who's cast as the lead in Jodie's film, is depicted as a space cowboy with a poorly executed Texan accent. Gail claims that Jodie requested Cole's involvement, but it soon becomes clear that Gail and Ryder have ulterior motives. As Colt reluctantly re-enters the world of stunt work, he must navigate complex relationships and confront his own demons. Central to the fall guy is the theme of the risks and sacrifices stunt performers endure, often without due credit, to breathe life into iconic films. These unsung heroes who risk life and limb are the backbone of cinema's most memorable moments. Naturally, the film features jaw-dropping stunt sequences, including a record-breaking cannon roll, a thrilling fight inside a spinning dumpster, and several heart-stopping vehicle jumps. Leach and his team strike a perfect balance between character development, comedy, and adrenaline-pumping action, ensuring a captivating viewing experience. Gosling, in particular, showcases his comedic skills once again, infusing Colt with hints of Barbie's Ken. He brings audiences closer to the emotionally guarded stuntman, who often resorts to movie quotes rather than expressing his true feelings. Blunt, on the other hand, not only displays her comedic talents, but also adds depth to her character. She ensures that Jodie, with her frenzied creativity, remains multidimensional and avoids becoming too one-note. Despite the film's numerous grand set pieces, it is surprisingly gentle at its core. It fearlessly places its star-cross protagonists in quiet, intimate moments, such as a nighttime car conversation, adding depth and tenderness to the narrative. Screenwriter Drew Pierce, known for his work on action-packed films like Iron Man 3 and Hobbs and Shaw, brings his expertise to the fall guy. The film's first hour is a breezy delight, filled with clever nods to big-budget filmmaking, including the use of split screens and a humorous take on the absence of an Oscar category for stunt work which is so important. The Fall Guy is dedicated to entertaining its audience, leveraging the dazzling star power of its charismatic leads in delightful romantic scenarios. It nostalgically harks back to an era when stunt work held greater significance before the dominance of CGI, embracing the collaborative nature of filmmaking with infectious enthusiasm. The film is a riotous joy, anchored by a lead actor perfectly suited to his role and a director whose entire career has seemingly led to this moment. While The Fall Guy shines in many aspects, it occasionally stumbles in its portrayal of misunderstandings between characters. These moments, while integral to the plot, sometimes feel drawn out and could benefit from clearer resolution. Additionally, the film's climax, while intense, may extend longer than necessary, potentially losing some viewers along the way. However, these are minor quibbles in an otherwise enjoyable film. That pays tribute to the unsung heroes of cinema with charm and charisma. And now moving on, the world knows about the Balakot airstrike, but what transpired behind the scenes? What was the Raniti behind India's successful operation inside Pakistan? Sphere Origins, the makers of Balika Vadhu, have surprised us with Raniti, Balakot and Beyond, a spy action thriller drama series that is already streaming on Geo Cinema. Not too long ago, we caught up with actors Jimmy Shergill, Lara Datta, Ashish Vidyarthi, South Import Prasanna and director Santosh Singh to get some insight into this Raniti. The Pulwama attack happened on the 14th of February. The Balakot airstrike happened on the 26th of February. What happened between those days is even more exciting than the two events that took place or, with, or the way that they were portrayed on screen so far. What happened, the decisions that were made that impacted India as a global power in those four few days is what Raniti is about. We have amazing stories right within our country itself. Unfortunately, a lot of times when you create something like this, you're accused of patriotism being misconstrued as jingoism. You know, and uh, well, people are have their own right to you know have their own opinions or things like that. But I don't see why, when you stand up for something that your country has done, which is which is a piece of history, it's not a piece of fiction that we're creating. 
that it cannot be taken in the right spirit for what it really is. Uh, it's basically uh, somebody who has a past. So, where you have a gun and everything is showing, it's his past. It's his mission, which is probably one of the missions that he did. He has a past. He's troubled by that past. And his uh, sense of taste and smell has gone. It's probably the past of the past. और आज उसके पास मौका है टू प्रूव हिमसेल्फ और क्या वो कर पाता है नहीं कर पाता है ये किरदार है कम बोलता है बहुत सारी ऐसी चीजें हैं जिसके बारे में शायद उसको पता है जिसके बारे में शायद उसने वॉन करने की कोशिश भी की लोगों को कि ये होने वाला है बट उसके पास कोई प्रूफ नहीं था इसलिए उसे सीरियसली नहीं लिया गया। The very same footage what we all the entire world saw when he was uh, uh, you know uh, in Pakistan. I got so much of minute uh, uh, inputs from uh, Santosh. For example, I'm obviously I'm not trained to be a, uh, uh, to be piloting a combat aircraft, uh, but uh, to sit inside the cockpit to feel comfortable inside that narrow you know uh, honestly uncomfortable space. Mm -hmm. To uh, bring out all that uh, G forces in my uh, expressions uh, in that uh, dogfight scene and all that was really challenging. And uh, I must really uh, thank Santosh. Maybe he found out new ways to, you know, motivate Torture. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, and and, uh, and he used to play some patriotic. I think so. A lot of patriotic uh, <laughs> songs to motivate me to really feel like, you know, uh, Abhinandan and that yeah. really helped me. We got those nine hours to put in the detailing and uh, therefore a lot of stuff which has not been in the realm of uh, public space has, uh, is now in the script. So it's not just a question that something happened and then we did. Uh, the story of this project is uh, what what were they thinking when they made it happen, then what was the reaction and then what were we thinking and then what did we do. So it's, it's a lot of detailing which has gone in. You have a tremendous amount of people, businesses, everything whose credibility is really based on their social media uh, presence more than what their, you know, where their talent or any of anything else lies, you know. So at the end of the day, today projection and the buy-in of an audience that is really soaking in everything that is put out uh, is massive. So yes, I think slowly changes will come. But at the end of the day, when something is out there, no matter what clarifications or refuting of anything is put out later, you will always buy into something that's come that comes out first. And invariably, you'll hear people <coughs> saying that there can't be any, you know, there, there's never smoke, you know, without a fire. You know, so at the end of the day, any area of conflict today, even across the globe, it's the narrative that's actually put out there that sustains things more than what the ground reality is. And we can see that today with conflict that's happening world over. I must tell you that we are very close. Uh, so, you know, I, I would rather uh, wonder that a whole lot of what would have been classified at one point has found its way into the script. We are really close in possibly revealing some things for the very first time. When we started actually, like, you know, two and a half years back, we were actually the first people who were working on it. We were supposed to come last year, August 15th, but, uh, you know, we are a series. We have a lot of limitations, like, you know, uh, with budgets and all those things. And VFX took time. Also, we wanted to make it look real as much as possible. So we took that time. We said, okay, aram se aayenge. So yeah, like things uh, got made, the other things got made, they came out, and now we are coming out. And now we're heading into a very special segment that we have devised to get into an actor's mind. What are the techniques that they employ at work? How they prepare for a role? What was their first shot? Everything actually in the mind of an actor with Sonali Bendre. No. Uh, I'm really proud of the broken news. My first shot would have been for an ad film. Um, I can't remember the product now, but so I can't give you a proper description of that. You know, 
scenes were still uh, a difficult to scene kind of challenges you and it excites you when you want to do it but for me the most difficult part of my career has been doing songs and that has been very very difficult i still find it easier when the songs are scenes but when the songs are not scenes it's very difficult for me uh there was a, a phase in my life when it was the paycheck that made me say yes to it and now it's the story the role the people concerned who am i going to spend that much of quality time with all that is very very important so uh, again earlier the preparation was more outward as in you got the what were the clothes it was always about uh, you know the dress designer coming in and the clothes being made and uh, now it is it is definitely about reading the script on set uh, i love being on set and i think I, i in that sense i'm pretty old school once i'm on set i don't go back to my van i'm on set good jones a lot of them and two of them are sitting here right next to me i learned so much from them oh my god i don't know if i can name one movie that has changed me but i can tell you the books that changed me forever and i would say like reading it would be authors it would be like a tony morrison or an isabel allende or a pratibha re you know these uh, women have really shaped me and changed my life and you know kind of made me the person i am time for a short break on the show when we come back we have kho gaye hum kahan actor and also the white tiger actor adarsh goro who's also a singer he talks about his new song Welcome back to now showing I'm Atika Faruqi the white tiger and kho gaye hum kahan actor Adarsh Gaurav is also a singer hmm i didn't know that and he has recently released a new single titled Bechaini Adarsh who's currently shooting for Alien a prequel series which is based on director Ridley Scott's cult sci-fi movie of the same name spoke to my colleague Vishal Chatkara about his new song and about Indian classical music kabhi bhul na paaye bhar gaye mahine saal bas chand ghadiyan thi lekin khud se main karu sawal nazar churaye muskuraye raha na jaye पुरानी यादों में गुम हो जाए रहा न जाए व्हेन दिस आईडिया ऑफ द सॉन्ग केम टू योर माइंड एक्चुअली आई वाजंट श्योर अबाउट मतलब इंटेंशन था ओफ के साथ गाना बनाने का बट आई वाजंट श्योर व्हाट द सॉन्ग वाज गोइंग टू बी अबाउट और मैं गाड़ी में उसके घर जा रहा था और फिर आई जस्ट रोड दीस टू वर्ड्स बेचैनी एंड जादुई बिकॉज़ आई वाज थिंकिंग ऑफ माय चाइल्डहुड व्हेन आई वाज इन द कार and i was thinking of uh, the first time i fell in love when i was you know 7 or 8 and i was just thinking of what it made me feel of ke ghar pahunch kar wahan pe we started talking about just incidents and uh, these things that we did when we you know when we were children i think within one one and half hours we wrote the all the lyrics and uh, i think char panch alag sittings mein sessions mein baith ke fir humne gaana bana uh, gaurav yeah. you're a trained musician <clears throat> you composed some mm. indian classical music for 9 years Hmm. Do you get time to class <clears throat> in your busy schedule? You're a busy actor now as well. Um, I I do my riyas almost every day unless I'm shooting and it's a very early call time. Even on the days I'm shooting, I try to wake up a little bit early and get in get in some time for riyas for at least twenty minutes, twenty five minutes. Is there a new rag that you are practicing on currently? I'm going to say the truth, sir. इतने साल मैंने क्लासिकल सीखा है पर मैं अब जब प्रैक्टिस करता हूँ ना मैं वही दस राग पहाड़ के गाता हूँ कौन से एक तो यमन है एक भैरव है एक भैरवी है समटाइम्स आई लाइक टू सिंग बिहाग समटाइम्स आई लाइक टू सिंग काफी है और अलैया बिलावल एंड दीज आर ऑल सॉन्ग दैट आई लर्न इन माई फर्स्ट ईयर जो कॉम्प्लेक्स रागस हैं जो आपने फिफ्थ सिक्स ईयर में सीखे होते हैं तोड़ी टाइप के राग मियाँ मल्हार वगैरह 
वो सब मेरे को याद ही नहीं है बट जब आप सीख रहे थे तो कोई फेवरेट राग था जी जो आप जिसमें आप बहुत कंफर्टेबल थे यमन कल्याण इज लाइक माय ऑल टाइम फेवरेट तो कौन से गाने हैं यमन कल्याण के जो आपको बहुत पसंद है या जो आप यूज करते जो, जो हमारा बंदिश था जो गुरुजी से हमने सीखा था वो तो आ, वो था कल्याण रागिनी अत सुख कर कल्याण रागिनी अत सुख कर मध्यम तीवर रूप सब सुध सुर कल्याण रागिनी अत सुख कर लेकिन जब मैं प्रैक्टिस करता हूँ मैं राग से ज्यादा मैं स्वर गाता हूँ मैं अलंकार I stick with not the words but just the nire ga ma pa ha ni za ni da pa ma ga re za ni re za ni da pa so I just keep playing with the with the uh, swars rather than the words. May you shine bright like a hero forever. Master the run nitis in your work life and your personal life. and never become a fall guy for anyone we hope you enjoyed this show goodbye and have a great weekend